Okay, so I had the bright idea for our roughing stage to kind of fill the space in between with some pea gravel. Um, no idea if it'll help or not, but it seems like when we're doing the roughing, we're not getting into a lot of the smaller cracks and crevices and stuff. So I figure this may help get into that and keep the grit from settling on the bottom if it does in there. So we're using that 36 grit and I'm thinking that it's maybe a little too heavy and it's not really staying up in the rocks because it doesn't seem to be grinding them as quick as I'd like to see. So we'll try this. I mean, no idea. We'll do, this we'll do like a side-by-side -side batch. We'll do one barrel with pea gravel and one the way that we've been doing it the last few times. So definitely needs to be rinsed though. It's pretty icky. But I figured I'd rinse it so I don't fill up the barrels with mud. Okay, so this is kind of our typical batch of parking lot beauties. But I wanted to test out to see if the pea gravel would rough it up a little more. And I don't want to waste our good uh, rocks with this test, um, but I wanted to figure out if it'd be worth uh, using the pea gravel. So we'll just kind of sort it evenly, uh, distribute between either barrel and uh, see what happens. So a lot of these, not quite sure what will happen when we polish them, but that's what's fun about this. And you wanna fill the barrels about half to three quarters. So we're about there. Uh, we'll pick one more good rock for each. These both are like uh, reddish. These turn out cool. Might be carnelian. I don't know. Okay. So, we got those, and then got some pea gravel here. Like I said, I'm not gonna weigh these before to try and get the weight and stuff. I'm more of a, uh, let's just do it and see what happens kind of guy. So, try and keep it under the three quarter mark here. So I think that looks pretty balanced. They're three pound barrels. So I do about three of these a piece. What is that, honey? This is a tablespoon of 36 grit silicon carbide. And silicon carbide apparently is about just a step below diamonds on the hardness scale. You see it's super coarse. So the idea is it gets in between the rocks and, you know, churns help churn it up. But the problem that I'm seeing is it is super heavy, it's super dense. Anytime I dump these out and rinse them, this stuff is sitting at the bottom of the slurry, any of it that's left. And you can see when you put it on, it just kind of falls right through the rock. So I'm wondering if with like the barrel that doesn't have anything in it, if it's, if the grit's just kind of going to the bottom and rolling around in the bottom and not getting pulled up into the top. So that's what I'm hoping with the pea gravel is that we'll get kind of, it'll pick it up and bring it back up into the rocks a little bit. So that's my hypothesis. We'll give it a test. So we'll top these off with water. Maybe I'll go get some water. That's about where I fill them. I'm kind of just, uh, I kind of wing it as I go. I know a lot of you probably have a really great system of how to do it and by all means please if i'm doing this thing completely wrong just fill me in uh, i love pointers tips um stuff like that so um but this is how i'm doing it so we'll seal it off and get it started and throw it in what i got 10 11 days just let them roll oh boy it's been two weeks and it is time to check which one? This is the pea gravel one. This is a knot. <laughs> okay. So let's see what we got. Eh, not as frothy as I would expect. Pretty round, I guess. Oh, oh God, that was a good lightning. Wow. Yeah, we well, better hurry. We got a storm rolling in. Okay, now for the no pea gravel. 
batch. About the same consistency, eh, maybe less. I don't know. Those look pretty dang smooth, actually. This might be a tough call. Some of those look pretty dang good. Ooh, gosh. That's some of that Utah agate there. Now let's go dump them and see. We'll start with the ones that did have the pea gravel, which is this row right here. Some of them did smooth out quite a bit. You see the dry side versus the wet side. These are not very impressive when they're dry, but the wet, a lot of colors were coming through that were kind of cool. But I'm still seeing a lot of, you know, dense cracks, stuff like that, that still has quite a ways to go. So this is the one that I was hoping would maybe tumble faster with that pea gravel. I mean, a lot of these rocks are really starting to look cool, but I think we're gonna put all of them back in for another week or two. Um, Cause we got a lot of holes and cracks still in these things. So the other side, this is the side that did not have any pea gravel in it. And honestly, I say this is quite a bit smoother. What do you think? I think so. I think all in all, the one, I mean, some of them obviously them too, fast. too fast. I'm just excited. Yeah. A lot of these are dang near ready to go into stage two. Pretty exciting. That one's really pretty. That one's going to be really nice. This one's got a lot of really cool banding, but it's got a giant hole in it. So if I had fancy equipment, like a saw or a grinder, something like that, I may try and take some of those big pits and holes out and then continue polishing. But some like this, I don't know if those will ever come out. I mean, you're gonna have a teeny little you're gonna have something this size by the time it's smoothed out. That pea gravel's really pretty though. Yeah, some of this pea gravel turned out pretty good though, hey. So, all in all, I would say for this experiment, probably not the most successful method, just from what I can see here. I would say out of these two piles, the one without the pea gravel probably looks a lot more polished. I think so. Well, a lot more rounded. Mm -hmm. We'll be polishing them later. But all in all, a few of these will come out. I'm going to, that one's ready to start polishing for sure. Um, this one's probably ready to start polishing. I don't want to wear that one down too much. I think I can throw this guy into polish now. This one can go back in. And that this one, I think we can start polishing too. That one reminds me of bacon. So out of two weeks, two different methods, at 36 grit silicon carbide, we have five ready to go to the next stage. And all the rest, I'm just going to Humble them. Uh, I'm going to try something new because I just got some new, I believe, 6090 grit. And I'm going to mix that with the 36 grit and do three grits combined. Whoa.